Hello and welcome to my channel. I have revised a new script for computing the critical path method using Python 3. This is a code walkthrough and this script is much better than the previous script that I have made. So if you want to, this script you can just download. The link is in the description provided below. And let us start discussing now. First, the script, there, there is two scripts all in all. One is main.py, which is the main uh, function or, or the program running. And the other one is task.py, which contains all the functions as needed. So if you want to see how it works, so I'll just execute this, python3 main.py. And it will compute the critical task of each of the tasks listed here. Our input is in a ODS file here, but you can also use an Excel file. Take note if you're going to make a new file, the format should be like this. Okay, you can. This one is. These are just strings, and you can increase this or decrease the definition or the description of the code, and then these are the codes or the task codes the tags at which links every other tasks and this one these are the codes which are which are the predecessors of the existing tasks for example task b before you can complete task b you need to do first task a okay and before you complete task h you need to complete task e and g Okay, and in this column, you can find here the days or the amount of time required to complete in each task. For task A, there are no predecessor tasks. Okay, so in order to compute for them, let's start doing this Python code. So here, if you're going to run this code in your machine, if you're going to have the uh, Windows machine, you just need to, to write in the command python3 and the name of the file uh, name of this script you just need to again to change the name of the file that you use if you're going to use that ods file in libreoffice or openoffice.org you need to do this uh, you need to import this read ods so make sure you have you have this uh, read ods reader module installed in your python environment if you want to use only the pandas so you just copy the the format of this excel file or this spreadsheet file and then you make it a microsoft excel file and you uncomment this code here and then of course you need to comment this one so that you, you in default you, you will be going to use this excel file so first of all, I created, I included here a start and time, start and stop time, so that I can monitor the speed in which Python executes the script. Okay, but the start of the code starts here in line ten. Here you can see that I've imported the pandas module as well as only the pandas ODS reader. Okay, these just two modules here, and. I import also all the functions can, that can be found in the task.py which I have created here okay and then this main file only has two execution for this compute okay the first one is the function compute CPM so it, this function directly computes the critical the critical path from my data file okay and the other line just print it out okay so in order for in order for this to, to be implemented the compute cpm my data compute CTM, cpm function can be found in this time module in this sorry in this task module here that i've imported okay So this is the task.py. So first, in this line of code, I have imported the necessary module pandas and pandas and numpy. 
okay and line 6 up to line 10 this is just the the printing of the output file like this the stars here going to print the stars in this top so this is the function for it this one print stars and line 12 up to line 15 is a function to indicate error error in the input file it will pr provide the error code code message if the error is the input from the codes okay if the error comes here you mistakenly put some uh, things here which are not codes okay so here you, you should not put any commas okay and you just need to put on the actual code which is represented here in this case next is the error error days message which in, will indicate an error if you have if these uh, numbers are not are if these are alpha numbers or they are not they are not numeric they are strings of characters so it will generate an error okay the next function that I have created is guest task code in this function the idea is that it will go through a lot of a lot of codes here it will scan all the codes from A to H okay it will scan it down and check if the corresponding code input is is present in this list okay so it's just go around here and if code is given it will it will then return the index number for example if you're looking for code B it will return the index number one because code A has zero it's from zero one two three four five six seven and so on and so forth so if you're looking for code C that will be number two so it will return an integer of number two and it will here return else if the code cannot be found it will return an error code message okay now in line 45 uh, below up to below we will compute the forward pass first we need to indicate in here in this line the number of tasks present so it is the number of tasks from this one up to here okay the shape of the task okay because the first one are the headers or the column names so the data frame only has the index from 0 up to 7 here next I, ind I created a numpy array of zeros uh, with the size of the shape of this one and task and a type of integer 8 so it will just have an input of integers and then I created also a temporary list variable to hold temporary codes next is that I need th in this one I already start computing for the early start ES is early start and EF is early finish in this case if predecessors are none for example here there's none automatically the early start will be zero you can find here if it's none the early start is zero okay and then the early finish will be the early start plus the number of days needed in this case the early finish is early start from the number of days needed which is 16 so the early f finish will be 16 okay now if the predecessor task has no has nothing or it has codes on it okay so it will run up the predecessors it will scan the predecessors okay and get the early finish of this task for example here if this is present for task B okay it will scan task A and it will get the early finish in this case the early finish is 16 okay if for example it has two of them here so in complete of task G it has two predecessors okay the maximum early finish 
between D and F, okay, the, the early finish of D is about 40, yeah, okay, and the early finish of F will be about 56. Between the two, the maximum of 40 and 56 is 56. So the early start of G is 56 here. Okay. So what is th what is this is that after it get all the e all the early finish in indicated in the predecessor list, okay? It will then get the maximum of them. And that is the early start of this. In this case, the early start of this is 78 in task G, it's 56 because D and F as early finish of F is 56 and D is 40. Okay? So it will just get the early finish, the maximum, and then it will try to get also okay, the early finish is just the early start plus the days. So the early finish in this case of B is 26. So 16, 16 plus 10 is 26. Same is true with all of them. So 26 plus 18 is 44 and 16 plus 24 is 40. That is how you compute the early finish. I've included here the try and accept so that just in case you have an error in encoding the data, it will generate an error or it throw back an error to you. For each loop, I need to reset the temp, the temp list so that there will be zero, this one will be empty and then we start inserting again on that list the list of early finish for the, for the different predecessors in the specific task. Then on the line 75, I need to just put this uh, NumPy arrays okay in the my data data frame and it will then be included afterwards it will return the my data okay and the next function is a backward pass in the backward pass we're going to compute the latest start and latest finish as well as we need to also indicate the successors for each task in this case i need to compute the successors here and put it here Okay. For example, in task H, task H has no successors because it is the last task. However, in task G, task G is listed here in task H as a predecessor. So task G, so the successor of task G is H, because the next in line of task G is H, so the heat successor is H. And in this case, in task C. It has two successors, which is F and E, because after task C is finished, task F and E will start to be implemented. So the successor of task C is F and E. In task A, the successor is D and B, because D needs to be completed after only A is completed, or D is, needs to be started after A is started, and also B can be only be started if A has already been finished. So that is the meaning of the successors. After computing the successors in this function, okay, I just need to incorporate again the column in the data frame in line 106 here. And then I can start working for the early finish and early start. In computing for the early finish and early start, if there are no successors, then the early, the early start the latest finish will be the maximum early finish of the range of data here so the maximum early finish is 92 okay so the late finish is also 92 okay but in case that the successor is not is not null or is has it has something in it so it just browse again for each successor code task and then get the index and then we temporarily append the latest starts of each code okay for example the successor of task c is f and e okay f and e is the successor so it will just get the task code here and 
put in the latest start. So F and E's F and E's latest start is about fifty eight and forty four. Okay, so the minimum of fifty eight and forty four will be forty four. So task C's latest finish will be forty four days. That's how it is computed. Okay, so the minimum of it is taken here. Put it here, latest finish minimum, and the latest start will be the latest finish subtracted the days on that specific task. For example, in B, subtract the latest finish will be 26, we just subtract 10, that will be 16. And also for task C, the latest finish is 44, we need to subtract uh, 10, uh, sorry, 18, so it will become 26. So we compute everything. Afterwards, we then incorporate them to the data frame okay on line 33 there is a compute for slack and critical state so we just it's just a, a looping on every individual um, latest start and latest finish early start okay in the data frame here okay early latest start minus early start will be the slack for example here latest start is 32 early start is 16 you have a slack of 16 and latest start of 58 minus latest early start 44 you have 14 you can also com compute it based on latest finish and early finish so 78 minus 64 that will be 14 a slack also true with latest finish and early finish 92 latest finish early finish is 92 again so 92 ma subtract my 92 is 0 so slack is 0 then if there's there is a slack here is the slack is zero then it will become a critical task and if the slack is non-zero it will not be a critical task so that is here you can put it here 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 okay this is the for loop to indicate if it's critical or not okay then in line 53 i'll just rearrange the data to make it prettier because the columns are are not that arranged and then i return my data here in line 160 up to 165, I just this is just a wrapper function wherein I combine all the functions here and return the my data file. Okay, and in this case, the line the print function is just a simple print function which you can modify. Okay, I print here the stars and the list down that you can see it here. Okay, so that is how I run this script to compute for the critical task if there are some errors i just need to modify them okay and just inform me if you have questions if you happen to like this video and if you benefit in my code that i've written please like uh click the thumbs up or like and click the subscribe button okay so once again thank you for watching uh see you in my next video bye